we invite you once again to open your hearts and your minds so that you might encounter the resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. unite our voices and proclaim our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Hey y'all, um, well today we're going to be talking, we're having the communion this Sunday, so we're going to be talking about communion. Well, um, when Jesus um, had communion that first time, or the Lord's Supper that first time, you know, they had bread and wine. And um, really, bread and wine was something they had all the time. It was a daily thing. And it's really, it would be no different than us having like bread like this, um, or us having a um, bread and coke you know what i mean it'd be no really difference to us having like a, a bread and a coke would be what uh it'd be for us to kind of day bread and sweet tea or something like that and uh jesus took it and uh blessed the bread and blessed the wine and when it when he did they became something uh, uh extraordinary and uh it became something special it became his body and his blood and uh so that's um and he said, do this as often as you uh, eat and drink 
uh, to remember me. So all he's really saying is, you know how we say a blessing? Uh, every time we eat or drink something, he wants us to remember what he did for them. Every time we have bread and every time, so every time we have communion, we're supposed to remember. We're really, every time we eat, we're supposed to say a little prayer and just say, thank you for what you did for us. Um, so, uh, again, uh, when Jesus blessed it, uh, the bread and wine, it becomes something extraordinary. And same thing with the, here at church when, uh, they, it's just regular old grape juice that we have. And it's just regular old, uh, bread from Publix that we have. And so, but, um, they bless it and become something special. And so, um, that's the same thing with us. If we, uh, let God bless us and, um, uh, we become something special and, uh, we do something special for him and, uh, able to do great things for him. So, uh, um, just every time, so today, just every time you eat or drink, uh, just remember what Jesus did for us and died for us and saved us from ourselves. And that, um, uh, it's just ordinary. Everything about it was ordinary and it, all our days are ordinary, but, uh, when God's a part of them, they become something extraordinary. So, um, I guess that's about all I got. Just, um, just, uh, thank God every time you, uh, eat or drink, it's just a good habit to be in. And, um, so, uh, I guess we'll pray right quick. All right. Uh, dear God, uh, thank you for loving us and thank you for, uh, being with us and making us special. Uh, even though a lot of times we just feel ordinary and we don't feel special. So thank you for that. And thank you for always being there. And uh, we can't thank you enough for everything. Uh, we love you. Amen. All right. We all have a good week and we'll see y'all sometime before too long. Greatest Lord. We are here in your presence and we praise your holy name. We lift your name on high. We extol your many blessed virtues. And we praise you from the very depths of our being. You are a good and gracious God. And we thank you for how you move in our lives and in our world. Help us to remember that you are the giver of all good things and your best gift is your son, Jesus, our Savior. Thank you for making a way for us to return to you through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. God, we ask that you be with our nation Guide our leaders in the ways of justice and peace. Put a hedge of protection around our military, our law enforcement, and our first responders. God, send revival to our nation and flood our streets with your peace. We ask God that you be with our seniors who graduate Guide them in the next steps of their growth. Protect them as they move forward. And Lord, let them be a shining light for you and your love. We ask God that you help us to be a living prayer, putting action to the words of our mouth. Guide us in ways that we can share your love with others and be your heart, your hands, your feet, and your voice. Help us, God, to continually be in prayer and in conversation with you. Let your praises always flow from our lips. We ask, Lord, that you touch all those we know with your healing power. Touch them and ease their pain and distress. Let them feel your presence and know that you have never left them and you will be with them always. God, please hold close all of those who mourn. Ease their pain and distress and grief. We ask, God, that you remind them of your great love. Help their pain lessen 
and help happy memories, let them move forward in a new way of life. Let them always know that you are with them and you walk each step of their way with them. God, guide us in the ways that you would have us be of service to you. Strengthen us for all that you have called us to do. Lord, we ask that you give us grace to labor for you and your kingdom. Help us to remember that you are the one who calls us, you are the one who equips us, and you are the one who gives us the opportunities to represent you in our world. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So today, our scripture reading comes from the book of James, the second chapter, beginning in verse 14. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith 
but has no deeds. Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs. What good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without your deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. Shall we pray? Well, Father God, in the next few moments, we pray. We pray once again that you would breathe life upon these written words. And that you would move within our hearts in such a way that you might change the very way we live out our lives. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. You know, we live in a world that is filled with tragedy. There's not a week that goes by that there's not some tragic event within our nation or our world that doesn't just captivate our hearts and our souls and our minds. Not a week goes by, it seems, that there's not a mass shooting somewhere where even children die. There's not a week that goes by that we don't see some horrific scene from war. Every four seconds, somewhere in this world, a child dies of hunger. Every hour, a veteran commits suicide. Whenever one of these tragic events, you know, captures the attention of our entire nation, our leaders always respond with the same words, our thoughts and our prayers are with you. You know, that term has been used so many times. Our thoughts and our prayers are with you that thoughts and prayers have become a joke, a line in a comics routine. You know, we've equated thoughts and prayers with the term good vibes. We ask people when we face something in our life, we ask them to remember us in their thoughts and, and their prayers and to send good vibes our way. It seems as though those are just words. And is it possible, is it possible that thoughts and prayers are useless? Well, you know, we are a resurrection people. We are people who claim a resurrection faith. We are people who follow a resurrected living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And for those of us who claim this resurrection faith, well, the words thoughts and prayers, they are powerful words. Because the words thoughts and prayers remind us that tragedy does not have the final say. That tragedy in the end does not win out. That there is a new day coming where there is no more violence. And there is no more hate. And there is no more death. You see, thoughts and prayers for us are reminders that as resurrection people... We have hope. And yet, 
And yet, here are these words from James. Do you want to hear them again? He writes, Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of, if one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical need, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Let me reword that a bit. Suppose. Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. A brother and sister's life is cut short by a mass shooting. A child that we will never know somewhere in this world dies of hunger. People who claim this same resurrection faith die as a consequence of war. A veteran who has given up all hope takes his or her life believing there is no possibility of a new or a better day. And one of us says, well, you're in our thoughts you're in our prayers, but does absolutely nothing to change the circumstance in which they live. What good are thoughts and prayers? In the same way, thoughts and prayers by themselves, if not accompanied by action, those thoughts and those prayers, well, they're dead. What good are thoughts and prayers if they have no arms, if they have no feet, if they lead to no action? Back in the 90s, when I first had the privilege of going over to the Holy Land, to going over to Israel, in one of our treks one day, as we were walking down these cliff sides, down this narrow path, we stopped and gazed on the other side, and, and our guide pointed out a cave and talked to us about a monk that lived inside that cave in utter isolation. One of many in that area that I would call prayer hermits, that they spend their lives in utter isolation. They spend decades of their lives in utter isolation. The closest thing to contact they have with this outside world are those who lower food in a basket from the top of the cliff down to the cave where they receive their daily sustenance. In fact, it's the only way they know whether that monk is still alive if the next day the basket comes back empty. And people ood, people awed. Because what these monks devote themselves to in isolation is a life of soul-directed prayer. That's all they do is they pray for this world every day of their lives in complete isolation. Other than praying, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, which is a powerful prayer. How do they know what to pray for in the time in which they live? And maybe that is the only prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But 
while others ooed and others awed, I wondered, what's the value of one who prays for this world and who has no contact with this world? Huh. Thoughts and prayers. James would proclaim, and I think Jesus would agree, that prayers without arms and prayers without legs and prayers without heart and prayers without action, those thoughts and prayers are useless. They are equal to good vibes. Even Jesus said, Even Jesus says that when all is said and done, as we stand in judgment, the question is not going to be, how often did you offer this world your thoughts and your prayers? No, Jesus is going to say, hopefully, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was in prison and you visited me. I was sick and you tended to me as you did it, as you acted toward, as you were my arms and my feet and my voice and my heart to the least of these. You did it unto me. I don't know about you, but I'm tired. I'm weary of witnessing the same tragic events day after day after day. And the church of Jesus Christ, the church of this resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the followers of the one who gave his life upon a cross and conquered sin and conquered death as he died and three days later was resurrected from the dead. I'm tired and I'm weary of the body of Jesus Christ and all we have to offer, it seems, to this outside world is good bye. You know, there was a time, there was a time when I think that what we had to offer this world was limited to thoughts and prayers. But that was before the time of Jesus Christ. That was before the crucifixion where he pays the price for our sins and our bondage. That was before the resurrection where he conquers sin and death and sets us free to live in the image of God, to live in the power and the love and the grace of our creator, God. But we, brothers and sisters, we serve a living Savior. And those of us who serve a living Savior, well, we need to learn the power of living prayers. What are living prayers? Well, they may start with thoughts, maybe, good vibes. But here's how Jesus describes living prayers in the Gospel of Matthew, the seventh chapter in verse seven. Ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks, receives, and everyone who searches, finds, and for everyone who knocks, The door will be open. Living prayers. They begin with thoughts. 
And we ask God to heal this world and heal our nation and heal our communities and heal our churches. But then those prayers take on arms and those prayers take on feet and those prayers take on heart and soul as mine as we begin seeking God's will for this world and our nation and our communities and our churches. As we begin to seek what God's answer is to all of these tragedies. Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. But eventually those prayers and that seeking and that searching, it has to evolve into action. Knock and the door will be open. God tells us how we can be his hands and we can be his feet and we can be his voice and we can be his heart. We can be the body of Christ. When God shows us how, then we have to knock. We have to put those thoughts. We have to put those prayers into action as God opens the door for us to follow out his call. Upon our lives. We are resurrection people. We follow a resurrected Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Who moves us to bring life to this world. I remember in seminary. Listening to a renowned preacher by the name of James Forbes. And James Forbes said that the purpose of preaching is this. To resurrect the dead. He told us as preachers that was our task. Every Sunday when we came behind the pulpit was to resurrect the dead. Beautiful people, don't you get it? That's the church's purpose in this world to resurrect the dead. And that requires more than thoughts. It requires more than prayers that are limited to thoughts. That requires living prayers. And that requires action. You know, the next time, the next time we are captivated by some tragic horrific event maybe our response should be our thoughts and prayers are with you and so is the resurrected Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and so are we in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, 
Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has is died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ. That we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now go forth in peace. And may the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.